Now at six, a Missouri representative speaks after gang violence in Haiti takes the life of his daughter and son-in-law. Plus, some Pittsburgh residents express concerns over their trash service and I'm Samantha Walker, and we'll have that story coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Severe weather heads back to our area this weekend. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Tanya Bach. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us with a first look at weather. Well, we've got storms already moving through right now, but we do have another severe threat tomorrow as well. Joplin just got some rain, but we're starting to clear up. You can see those clouds breaking and for the rest of the night going to remain pretty dry, but we do have a level four out of five risk for tomorrow. Now those storms most of the day looking pretty good, but after about 8 9 PM, we are expecting severe weather tomorrow night in the overnight hours. So be prepared for that. Now the storms we've got going on right now, two severe thunderstorm warnings, one issued for Delaware County and just clipping into southeastern Ottawa County and another one near Stockton as well. Both of those issued until about 6:45 p.m. tonight, and those are due to the um, quarter-sized hail and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Now we are starting to see this start to take it uh, down a little bit, starting to dissipate. We'll keep an eye on it, but next heading just south of Pineville. So watch out for that severe storm and we'll talk more about the severe storms tomorrow up next. All right, thanks, Lindsay. The daughter and son in law of a Missouri state representative have been shot and killed in Haiti. The Oklahoma based group missions in Haiti made the announcement today. The group said the couple was leaving a church when they were ambushed by three trucks full of gang members. In total, three Christian missionaries were shot and killed in the ambush. Gang members began shooting at a residence the missionaries had taken shelter in at about 9 p.m. Central Daylight Time last night. Reuters was able to confirm that the couple seen in the pictures matches the facial features of a file image released by Natalie Lloyd's father, Missouri State Representative Ben Baker. The identity of the third person killed has not been released. Representative Baker, who serves a portion of Newton County, including Neosho, released a statement which said in part, quote, please pray for my family. We desperately need strength and please pray for the Lloyd family as well. I have no other words for now, end quote. Today, the Missouri Trucking Association hosted the annual Safety Break Day event. The event recognizes road safety and the vital role of the trucking community. Visitors could enjoy hot dogs, beverages and ice cream and take the opportunity to learn about road safety. Sit inside the seat of a semi truck. You can notice and it's what they're training here today that there are certain areas where cars are passing them and we're just not aware of them at all. So those blind spots, you never want to stay in a blind spot very long. So either get around the truck or stay behind the truck. Visitors were also able to meet with representatives from MoDOT, FedEx, and the Missouri Highway Patrol. Well, some Pittsburgh residents say their trash is not getting picked up on time. According to those residents, Cards Recycling and Waste Management is the company responsible for the service at their homes. In addition to delayed trash pickup, they claim they're having a hard time contacting the company. According to Cards, most situations are case by case, adding if their service is delayed, they should notify Cards. Now, Cards is fairly new to the Pittsburgh area. They acquired Shorts Trash Service last summer. Um, if we do have any types of service interruption, whether it be a holiday schedule and or just a delay in service for that day, uh, being picked up the, the next day or previous day, we will notify those customers and let them know that any trash that they have out, we will collect. We, we tried to keep some of them in here because we knew the animals would get to them if we overstacked the bin and... You know, and so we kept some of them in here and I'm telling you, my house smelled like baby poop through and through. And I was like, they better come pick up this trash because I'm about to lose it. KOM spoke with Cards on Thursday and a few residents this morning, and we've sent some follow up questions to Cards and hope to have an update after the holiday weekend. The city of Pittsburgh says they've been receiving calls with concerns. City officials are looking into establishing a trash service as a way to address the concerns and hope to have more details before the end of summer. KOM has also heard from residents in other local cities facing the same issues 
with cards. Well, tournament play wraps up for some area baseball and softball teams today. John Dales has this story and more coming up later in sports. But first, a new Memorial Park opens in Oklahoma ahead of the Memorial Day weekend. Ahead of Memorial Day, members of the Joplin Civil Air Patrol, Colonel Travis Hoover Composite Squadron are honoring a Civil War veteran. Now this is a live look at the wreath laying ceremony. The grave belongs to Isaac Daniel of Kentucky. After war, he and his wife settled in Cherokee County, Kansas before he passed away around 1880. Daniel's family had given up hope of finding his grave until it was recently discovered by the Jasper County Cemetery Preservation Society. Well, ahead of Memorial Day, many people try to find ways to honor and remember those who have served. And today, a new Memorial Park has opened, working to do just that. KOM Samantha Walker has more. Hundreds of people have come out for the first time to the Legacy of Liberty Memorial Park in Monkey Island, Oklahoma. The park features military machinery and local stories from World War II. It's not about the equipment, it's about the people and what their, their, their dedication, about the values that they carried of honor, dedication, commitment, integrity, valor, bravery. I could go on and on. The park was built by the Shangri-La Resort. Organizers welcomed area veterans and their families to come to the grand opening of the memorial. This is connected to people that are right here living today. And, and that's, that's, that, to me, creates the human element of reality for it. For people like Paul Bolton, the memorial hits close to home. As a personal thing, it's, it's special. It, uh, it just makes everything tingle. His father, John Bolton, who was a medic during World War II, helped injured soldiers while stationed in England. Now Bolton and other soldiers are honored with their stories of service on display. I'm so proud to be a part of this and for his statue to be here, but if you look on that little monument, this little section here, this part of the exhibit was about mercy and service. And uh, for him, being a medic was a, was a pretty ideal thing to be able to do during the war because he could help his fellow soldiers and take care of them. Uh, Organizers of the Memorial Park say their goal is to help future generations know the history of our nation's heroes. That's probably the main purpose for this park. Uh, today is great, but I'm hoping that next week, next year, 10 years from now, a generation from now, two generations, this is still here with the message. Reporting in Monkey Island, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Organizers say they worked until late last night to finish the park in time. The Legacy of Liberty Memorial Park is free and open to the public. And we'll have to check that out. Well, if you haven't made plans for this weekend, you can find plenty of events in and around our area. Mulberry Homecoming takes place this weekend. This long-standing tradition will include a parade, live music, a car show, food vendors, and more. Homecoming runs Friday through Sunday. And today, Parsons, Kansas rolls out the 2024 edition of Katie Days. This annual event features a beer garden, live music, a kids entertainment tent, a railroad and history related activities, a vintage baseball game, petting zoo and so much more. The public pool and splash pad will be open for activity on Sunday, May 26th after the Katie Days Festival. We'll have more Memorial Day weekend events on our website. Just go to KOAMnewsnow.com. A little later, the Joplin Outlaws kick off their 2024 campaign. John has the latest on their young season coming up later in sports. And we've got some storms pushing through tonight and again tomorrow night. I'll have more details right after the break. We've got a cold front passing through today, so we are seeing a few storms. But let's take a look outside right now. Downtown Joplin from the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Center. They just got some rain. Luckily, those storms have already passed the Joplin area, but we are still seeing a few more storms in our southeastern and eastern counties, and those are starting to push through. We've got a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings, one just east of Stockton, right outside of our viewing area, so not much we can do about that. And then we've got another one near Grove in Delaware County and Ottawa County, so we can see just past, or it's starting to pass, starting to weaken as well. We did see quarter-sized hail and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Now that 
that severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 645 today, and it's going to continue near Pineville, maybe just south of Pineville. But like I said, it is starting to weaken, but you still could get some rain, maybe some hail as well if you're near Pineville. Now, this was that severe thunderstorm warning east of Stockton in effect until 630. So if you're in the area, it is you know, Memorial Day weekend, so just take precaution. But some of the other storms that just moved out of the Joplin area still pretty weak, so we're not going to expect any severe thunderstorm warnings issued for any of the storms east of Joplin or Carthage. But near Greenfield, those look pretty strong. So keep an eye on those storms. Overall, we're not really seeing a severe threat, maybe some small penny sized hail some 60 miles per hour wind gusts, but our main threat that we're looking at this weekend is tomorrow. We've got a high risk, which is a level four out of five risk. And we had this like last weekend, I believe, um, or the weekend before that, but most of our counties out in Kansas and Oklahoma in that level five out of uh, four out of five risk, excuse me, not to mention Jasper County uh, is also in that level four out of five risk. Now we're expecting these storms into the overnight hours possibly coming in as early as 7 p.m., but likely after about 9 p.m. and well into the early morning hours on Sunday. Main threat, large hail, strong wind gusts up to 75 miles per hour, but we also can't rule out tornadoes or localized flooding. So let's take a look at the future track of these storms. This is tonight. <clears throat> Most of these storms starting to weaken as they're pushing southeast and Arkansas might see some strong storms tonight, but we're going to be clear and most of the day tomorrow also looks pretty nice. Some clouds here and there, but overall pretty nice temperatures getting up to the low 80s and then clouds start to push through. It's about 5 p.m. We're not seeing any rain coming in until later on in the evening around 839 and then those storms coming in 930. We've got a few stronger supercell storms pushing in and when these do move into the area this is about midnight moving into the joplin metro they're going to continue to push through and mostly kansas city getting some strong storms but like i said we had one or two large supercells and with these supercells we could see large hail damaging wind gusts tornadoes and localized flooding and they're going to continue well into the morning hours finally moving out of the area around four in the morning so Doug Hetty will be here and we will be live streaming since we do have an alert day set for Saturday evening and this will be late about 9 p.m. But the rest of the Memorial Day weekend looking pretty good. We're going to stay dry all the way through Tuesday and then we've got scattered thunderstorm chances continuing for the rest of the week. All right. Well, definitely something to keep an eye on and to make sure that you have a cell service or something there or weather radio with you if you're out and about on the lake or. Yeah, I mean, most of the day on Saturday is looking pretty good. These storms are really contained to the overnight hours, but always be prepared and take extra precautions if you are traveling. All right, but Memorial Day Sunday and Monday? Looking good, looking very good. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Still ahead, three of our local softball and baseball teams try to punch their ticket to the state championship. And the Liberal High School Junior is named Western Missouri Conference Player of the Year. John Dales has those stories and more. Up next. Baseball and softballs here in Kansas. Colgan and Frontenac both make it to the final four in baseball. And Frontenac is in the semifinal round for 3A softball tournament as well. Well, we'll start with Frontenac baseball. Early this afternoon, the Raiders fall to Trinity Academy 10 to three in the semifinals. The Knights are the top seed in the 3A tournament. Raiders then move on to the third place game. In that third place game, Raiders are matched up with six seed Hoisington. Good contest between these two as we come on the air. Still not finished. They're tied at four in the seventh. Corbin Nix just hit a game tying sacrifice fly. Just a day after he had a game tying hit in the quarterfinals. In the 2-1A baseball tournament, Colgan's defense of its 2023 title comes up one game short of the championship, the Panthers fall to Mission Valley 7-5 in the semis. They move on to play Thomas Moore Prep Marion in the third place game. In that third place game, Panthers leave no doubt. They beat TMP Marion by run rule, 10-0. The final score after just six innings, Colgan finishes the year bringing home a third place trophy from the 2-1A state tournament. And moving over to softball, Frontenac is once again matched up with Trinity Academy. 
Lady Raiders, though, win it 1 0, and they will advance to the state championship game later this evening. Their opponent, Silver Lake, who's won both of its games at state by 10 runs, will bring you the highlights from that contest tonight at 9 and 10. Well, the high school softball season is over in Missouri, but today the Western Missouri Conference announces its postseason awards, and Liberal High School junior Jordan Goodell is the league player of the year. In the Bulldogs District Championship win over Lockwood, Goodell pitched a complete game, got the win, and picked up her 500th career strikeout. Switching gears to collegiate summer baseball, the Joplin Outlaws began their 2024 season with a 10-6 win over the Sherman Shadowcats last night. The two play each other once again tonight. First pitch just over a half hour away, 7.05 start time. Meanwhile, some college basketball news. Former Missouri Southern forward Darius Dawson announces on Instagram he's transferring to Division I school Austin P. He averaged 14 points and just over six rebounds per game with the Lions this past season and has one year of collegiate eligibility remaining. And it's also state final time for Kansas High School track and field. Multiple of our local athletes from Southeast Kansas are individual state champs. Now events have been going on all day. They'll continue into the night, but as we come on the air, four athletes from SEK are state champs. Riley Bebb is the 4A girls javelin state champion. Coffeeville teammates Dontavious Boykin and Kanan White in the triple jump and shot put in 4A. And then Lily Brown takes first in the 2A girls triple jump. That's the third year in a row that Lily Brown has won state. She also set a new state record in that win. Yeah, I can't remember her distance, but man, it's impressive. Yeah, very Definitely impressive. impressive. All right, that is it for sports. We're back after this. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. We'll have more on the efforts to honor a Civil War veteran buried near Joplin. Plus how the rise of inflation is impacting the diets of Americans. And we learn about the top luxury travel destinations for the summer. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. All right, final weather note. Well, it is Memorial Day weekend. Most of the days are looking pretty nice, but we do have an alert day set for Saturday due to the storms coming in after 8 to 9 p.m. into the overnight hours. So be aware of that if you're making travel plans, anything like that. But other than that, rest of Memorial Day weekend looking clear, really nice. All right. Final sports note. Well, it still feels weird that we're now at the end of the softball and baseball season in high school, but really good one tonight between Frontenac and Silver Lake for the 3A state championship. It's a rematch of the 2019 state championship, so we're looking forward to the more coverage on that. We'll have everything for our viewers tonight at 9 and 10. So if they win, both the boys and the girls? If or? the girls win, they're state champions. The boys right now are in a tie game in the third place third game. Third place game. Yes. All right. Well, that'll be exciting, too. All right, thanks for watching. We're going to see you right back here at 10. Have a great evening and an even better Memorial Weekend.